because it does draw poisons into it so it needs to be thrown out. Now we're going to look at the raw onion. There's a couple of places you can use the raw onion and one is for a sore throat. Now if you want to uh, tell a friend about this because maybe they've got a sore throat they can go to YouTube and Google Barbara O'Neill and there is a onion uh, natural remedies lecture there, poultices. So for the sore throat you finely slice the onion into a few into a few slices and what we do is we, if the sheets get old you just tear up the sheets and then you put this sliced onion on the on the cloth and you fold the cloth over and then fold it back over and then that will go around the throat like that and then you can wrap a scarf around it nice woolly scarf and you can go to sleep with that and it'll bring relief to the to the sore throat I think we all know that when you cut up an onion you're likely to cry is that right so that's a, that's a clear indication that that onion juice is very good at breaking up mucus on the chest uh, in the throat in the head and what I'm going to do now might surprise you I'm going to put the onion on the bottom of the feet. So why do we put the onion on the bottom of the feet? We put the onion on the bottom of the feet because the bottom of the feet, or the feet I should say, are a reflex um, for the chest. And we're going to put the onion on the bottom of the feet for if someone has a bad cough in the night. And I'm going to use a plastic bag. Now at Misty Mountain we buy boxes of starch bags so they're made out of starch and that that would be the best now if you don't have starch bags you can certainly um, use a cloth so you might use a cloth put the put the onion like that and put it in the bag and then what you do is you put your foot on the on the onion like that and then you twist it around and put a sock on. So the bottom of the feet is touching the onion and then you put a sock on and it holds it in place. Now my grandson, he was three at the time, I was visiting my daughter and he had a bad cough and she gave him a hot bath which always eases the cough and put him to bed and he was coughing and coughing and coughing and coughing and we thought he'll be asleep in a minute but he kept coughing and coughing. So after half an hour, half an hour I said to Em, let's do the onion. So we got him up, we chopped up an onion and put half the onion chopped up on one foot and half on the other foot and put him to bed. Not one more cough. It's, all, it's almost unbelievable. You, you almost have to do it to believe how incredible it is. Not one more cough for the whole night with the onion on the bottom of his feet. So that's great for a night cough. Now I'm going to show you how to make an onion cough mixture. And the onion cough mixture is a very sim simple thing to do. You chop up the onion and then you layer it in a jar with honey. So we're going to chop it up small. Of course the smaller the better because the larger surface area you'll have. So I've got a jar here. So I'm going to put about half an inch in the jar and then you drizzle, drizzle honey. Probably about a teaspoon and then another layer of onion again half an inch and then another drizzle oops that was a bit heavy handed doesn't matter then another layer of onion and another drizzle of honey and a final layer of onion so if you had a house full of people that had a bad cold or a bad cough 
you might chop up an another onion and fill your jar. And then we finish with more onion. I'm doing this early in our demonstration because by the end of the night the syrup will have formed. You see, if I put the jar on the side, all you see is that thick gooey honey and onion. By the end of our demo, you will see a clear runny fluid forming and that's the cough syrup. After 24 hours, you strain the onion out and you're left with your cough syrup and you keep it in the fridge. How long can you keep it for? Well, a German lady told me that she'd had hers in the fridge for eight years. Because honey doesn't go off, does it? So once you take the onion out, it will, it will keep indefinitely. So for a, for a little child, maybe one under one, you might do a quarter of a teaspoon. For a two-year-old, you might do half a teaspoon, say three times a day. For a child from about ten above, you might do a teaspoon three times a day. So if a child's got a cold or a cough or a bronchitis, child's got a cold or a cough or a bronchitis, any respiratory asthma, so you give them the teaspoon three times a day and put them to bed with the onion on the bottom of their feet and everyone will sleep soundly that night. <laughs> so that's the raw onion. Now we're going to have a look at a relative to the onion, which is the garlic. I was, read, I was reading one research paper that said garlic is six times more potent than tetracycline. Now tetracycline is an is a antibiotic. To have it as potent as an antibiotic or to play a role as an antibiotic, you must have three raw cloves a day. So an adult will have three raw cloves like that. For a child you might halve the dose. Now in your books there's a recipe for the flu bomb. And the flu bomb has six ingredients. This is how I remember it. I remember it by twos. Garlic and ginger. Garlic as much as you dare. Ginger probably about a quarter of a teaspoon finely chopped and the garlic you finely grate. I was going to say this is a great grater. That sounds like a pun, doesn't it? <laughs> but I love graters like this. And when I'm cooking, I just grate straight into my pot and I'm going to use it in a minute and you can even travel with that little grater. So you see it's quite fine, so you'd finely, finely grate the ginger and the, and the garlic into a cup. So there's your first two ingredients. The next two ingredients are one drop of eucalyptus oil. If you haven't got eucalyptus oil, you could use um, a tea tree oil. One lady said, but Barbara, it says on the bottle you must not consume it. And I said, well, I'm not asking you to drink half a bottle. We've got some common sense, haven't we? <laughs> no, it's not very common today, I realise that. So one drop, it's an age-old remedy. People have been using it for centuries. I'm, well, Australia's the land of the eucalypt. And one 80-year-old lady told me this 40 years ago. She said when, when one child had a cold in their house, the mother would put a few grains of sugar on a teaspoon and a drop of car sorry, eucalyptus oil, and they all had to have a dose. And, you know, it's been used for centuries. The reason why they say you must not take it is 40 years ago, a little boy in Tasmania, you've heard of Tasmania, that little island at the bottom of Australia? He drank a few mouthfuls of eucalyptus oil and went into a coma. So they banned it. Now, there was such an uproar about it that they legalised it again. But if you buy eucalyptus oil in Australia, it's got poison on the bottle. Do not take, and it's because of that. How many young men have died from drinking a bottle of scotch at a party?